It is Christmas week this week, and that means that everything that I've been shipping to myself is not here. This lack of new parts has got me reflecting. The past few weeks, we've spent a lot of time fixing this car. I think it's time we have some fun. Before we set off, there are two general maintenance items on my Christmas maintenance list that I need to check off. The first thing we're going to be doing is cleaning the mass airflow sensor. In my ever annoying quest to fix the idle of this car, this is my next stop. The mass airflow sensor is the sensor right after the intake of the vehicle. Its main purpose is to measure the intake air as it comes in and send that information to the ECU so it can calculate the proper amount of gas to put into the engine. If it's reading a bad value, because it's dirty, it's going to send the wrong amount of gas into the engine, and you're not going to run as well as you should. It's recommended that you clean this every six months. I like to do it a little bit more frequently than that because I've got an aftermarket air filter. If you have an oiled cone filter, which is an old Older style, I highly suggest you do this more frequently. The part we're going to be cleaning is this black little vented thing right here with the sensor inside. To clean it, simply spray it with Mass Airflow Sensor Cleaner. You need to make sure to use Mass Airflow Sensor Cleaner since it's designed to evaporate almost immediately. If you use anything else, there's a high risk of it getting into the turbo and causing a lot of trouble. Once it's clean, you can simply put it back in and reinstall the intake. The next thing on my Christmas checklist is to inspect the N249 system and make sure that there are no leaks or hoses I need to replace. If you have a 1.8 or a 2.7T, you have an N249 system. It's a really common spot for vacuum leaks just because there's a lot of vacuum lines. A lot of people like to delete this system, but that's kind of a controversial mod because it's deleting a lot of functionality designed specifically by Audi. So what is the N249 and why would deleting it be controversial? The N249 is a collection of tubes. More specifically, it is a vacuum solenoid that connects the intake vacuum source to the back of the diverter valve. The way I'm inspecting this for vacuum leaks is by looking at all of the ends of each of these vacuum lines. You can tell you have a vacuum leak in this system if your diverter valve is no longer actuating and you're getting off throttle compressor surge. I know I don't have anything major here, but I wanted to go through and check just to be sure. The N249 system serves two general purposes. The first case takes place when the intake manifold pressure is less than zero. This could be situations where you're coasting, where you're shifting gears, but you're not necessarily accelerating or building any boost. In other words, this is where your car is during 99% of the time you're daily driving it. It takes time for the intake manifold to generate enough vacuum pressure to actuate the diverter valve by itself. The N249 has a store of vacuum pressure that it can use to actuate the diverter valve at any time. If this system wasn't here, or if say it was deleted, the intake manifold would take a long time to generate enough vacuum to actuate the diverter valve. And since the diverter valve isn't being actuated, we're going to get off-throttle compressor surge. This sounds something like this. Sure, this sounds pretty sweet, but it's actually really bad for your turbo housing. Since your diverter valve is staying closed, all this air is going through the turbos, the intercoolers, and the boost piping at all times. One of the side effects of this is that there's not enough exhaust flow to positively spin the turbos, so the intake air is actually propelling the turbos in a reverse sort of fashion and slowing them down. That's where you get the choppy sound. This also makes your engine pretty inefficient and hurts your fuel economy quite a bit. The second task that the N249 valve has occurs when you're under heavy load or a wide open throttle pull. Basically, any situation where there is positive boost developed by the turbos. In these situations, the N249 will pre-open the diverter valve just before the throttle closes to route the compressed air back into the inlet and letting the turbo spin freely down. Without the N249, as the throttle closes to practically nothing, the air has nowhere to go and since the diverter valves are still closed, it takes about 0.2 to 0.3-ish seconds for the manifold to develop enough vacuum to actuate the diverter valve. Your ECU is going to read this as a boost spike. Now with all the information I've given you, you may be thinking, that there's no real reason to ever do this. From what I can tell, people originally started to do this modification to reroute the boost in a much simpler way. The N249 valve and system is a lot of tubes, and consequently, since these cars are pretty old, it is a lot of places that will fail for vacuum leaks. It's a lot simpler to just run one pipe, but this isn't always a good idea. The only time I would suggest doing this mod with little to no side effects is if you have either a blow-off valve or a splitter valve. Even if these valves stay closed, they're still gonna let half the air to the atmosphere, so it's not gonna go back into the turbo. I'm running an upgraded diverter valve and I don't have any N249 leaks, so I don't think I'm gonna delete it just yet. Overall, the N249 system is a lot of protection for the engine. I like the idea of being able to save the turbo if the ECU ever detects a boost spike. The main pro of deleting the N249, in my opinion, is the fact that it cleans the engine bay up substantially. But you could also just relocate it. 
As I mentioned before, it is the week of Christmas. Rather than finding another problem with the car and fixating on that, I want to enjoy it. Specifically, I want to enjoy it in the Christmas snow. The TT is a blast in the snow, and it's honestly one of the best cars I've ever driven in winter. Really, the only thing limiting you in the snow is your ground clearance, so if you're going through six feet of snow, that's not going to work. So to answer the question, is the TT good in the snow? If you have the Quattro version, 100% yes. I spent the last few days filming myself hitting up some back roads in the snow. I edited all the footage together and made an initial D-style music video. This video by itself will be uploaded tomorrow, but for being such a good audience and watching this entire video, I'll show you early. A lot of effort went into this, so if you enjoy, consider liking and subscribing. I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy holidays. Enjoy the film. You'll see me, but you'll never hear a sound.